Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you are fortunate to be here in person with us all together in one big happy family. Um, welcome to church. <laughs> we are so glad that you could join us and invite you to stand with us and let's sing some praises to our Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your strength and salvation. Come all who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration.
Thank you for being the reigning king of our life. Thank you for sending your son to offer us salvation, Lord, that we can dwell in your kingdom. Lord, it is amazing to think just how precious that gift was and how often we forget the sacrifice that was truly made. Lord, I pray that we leave here this morning um, well aware of what you've done for us. And that we, we carry that with us into the, everything that we do this week, Lord. Um, that that we, we are, are saved by grace. And that we serve a risen Savior. Lord, again, we thank you and we love you. And uh, Lord, I just want to pray for all of us, everyone that's, that's traveling out and, and um, going to be having fun with their families this week. Lord, I just pray that you would keep a, a, a extra, extra little um, bit of protection around us and um, Lord just bring us all back here that we can worship together again Lord we thank you so much for your son Jesus and it's in his holy name that we pray amen All right, we're going to have a responsive reading, so as always, you say the yellow things. So, Pilate saith unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. All right. Hey, guys. How are we? Good, good. I'm super excited about this morning. I'm nervous, if you can't tell. Um, I'm a little nervous. That's all right, though. Uh, very, very excited. Very thankful for a couple folks who are going to be helping me out. I know that uh, this, next, this next thing we're going to do is a little bit different, um, and it is a little bit graphic. So if that's something that you worry about with uh, your kiddos, then uh, I encourage you to just I mean, this might be a great time to take them out for just a second, um, but I think it, it has a purpose. So um, just bear with us as we put the final touches uh, and get ready to, and we had to have a couple people make costume changes. So 
Uh, they're coming. Uh, I'm ready. You ready? Just want to just say that I am honored and I'm excited about this morning and just praying that God will be glorified in everything that's said and done. And I appreciate your prayers as I bring the word. I think we can pray as an act of worship for whoever it is with the responsibility of I'll bring it. It happens to be me this morning. So thank you. And I think they're probably ready now. Hey, you know, this is nothing personal. I've just got a job to do. This is part of my job. We all kind of do this same thing, right? Put Jesus on the cross, whether it's to make that next sale or kind of cook the books to make everything look better so that our job looks good. I gotta do what I gotta do. I got a family to support. And if that means Jesus has gotta go, then Jesus has gotta go. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. What kind of call was that? I've been in this business for like 10 years. That's the worst call I've ever seen. It's ridiculous. church you promised you would come with us the kids are singing in church choir today yeah well see the thing is I've got a lot of things that I need to get done here and if I get those things that I need done then I might have enough time to play a few holes of golf this afternoon and it's my only day off I get that I, I understand but it would mean so much to me and the kids, if you would just come with us, they, they're singing in the choir. They need your support. They need your encouragement. I, I know. I get it. I get it. But, like, they know that I love them. They know that I support them. And, I mean, they also know that I want them to be in church. I don't see, like, that's really not my thing. Just tell them I'm, just tell them I'm proud of them. go to church. <laughs> so I guess dad's not coming today. Oh, he couldn't make it, sweetie, but he loves you so much. He knows you're going to do a great job. No big deal, mom, but I really don't feel like singing in the choir today. It's not really my thing.
Alex, I'm home. I thought we would make it through one service without these monsters just disturbing us every every minute. Well, exactly. Maybe if there was a dad in a the picture, they'd behave a little better. <laughs> yeah, but what dad would she bring? <laughs> well, I can't believe that they're coming to this church. I mean, she's either looking for someone to help take care of these little monsters or looking for a new boyfriend. Whichever it is, she should be ashamed of herself. All right. Uh, if you have your Bible, why don't you turn me this morning to First Peter chapter two? First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four, and we will have it. Oh yeah, it's back here. It's not over there. Great, perfect. First Peter chapter twenty or chapter two, verses twenty-four. In 25, let's go ahead and read God's word together. It says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls." is finished. pray. Jesus, I love you, and I thank you so much for all that you do, God. Just thank you that you chose to love me with all of my sins, with all my failures, with all my flaws. God, I thank you that even when, as your child, I continue to fail, and I continue to make mistakes, and I continue to mess up, God, you still love me. And God, I pray that I won't use that knowledge as an excuse to live a lifestyle that's contrary to your word. God, I pray that, God, I won't trample the blood of Jesus with my life. God, I thank you that you could save someone like me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I didn't really expect that. Um, guys, it was, it was my sin. 
It was my sin that sent Jesus to the cross. It was your sin that sent Jesus to the cross. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees or the Sadducees. It wasn't the serial killers and the murderers and the child molesters and the rapists. It was all of us that sent Jesus to the cross. He bore in his own body my sin. Because I was dead in my sins. But now I've been saved and I've been called to live a life of righteousness. Something that Daniel's been preaching a lot on lately. By his stripes, I was healed. Now let me just say it in my notes, which makes me nervous to even bring it up. But I think this is one of those passages that is often misused and misinterpreted. Do I think Jesus is still in the healing business of the physical? Absolutely. But when we just say, by his stripes we are healed, name it and claim it, I don't think that's what this verse means. It means we were dead in our trespasses. We were separated from God because of our sin, and by his stripes I've been made alive. By the sacrifice he made, I've been saved. I have truly been healed, not of the physical ailments that I face, but of the spiritual one. And the number one ailment that we face is separation from God because of our sin. Um, you know, a lot of people declare life verse. I've had many life verses through my Christian walk, and it seems to always be changing. But my, my latest one that I've been holding on to is, is Colossians uh, chapter 2. Verses 13 through 15, if you want to read that, I think, yeah. All right, it says this, And you, being dead in your sins and your uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Listen to this, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public display of them, openly triumphing over them. Tressy, I'm a little bit out of order. Will you go back a couple slides? To the certificate of debt. We, are we able to do that? Can't go backwards? The pictures aren't there? Sweet. Love technology. Okay. Okay. Well, here's what the picture was anyway. So I'm just, this is a certificate of debt. This is my certificate of debt, and this is a very much condensed version. Because if it was my real certificate of debt, I wouldn't be able to hold it. It'd be so heavy. But here are some things on it. It says lust, anger, pride, rebellion, greed, idolatry, profanity, Arrogance. It's just sin. Sins that I've struggled with. Sins that I've dealt with. Some sins that are still a fight to stay away from. I'm being personal. I'm being real. I'm being honest. I'm not here this morning because I have no certificate of debt. I have one. And the balance was due. If you can't see the balance, the balance is death. The certificate of debt that I have racked up, the bill, the receipt of debt that I have racked up, the only payment was death. The Bible is clear. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, and I am a sinner. And there were times in my lives, or times in my life, that I was a proud sinner. It didn't bother me. I did what I wanted. I did what my flesh said it, it desired. And I racked up a bill I couldn't pay. 
But thankfully, the wages of sin might be death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you see here, my certificate of debt, it's been stamped. Tetelestai. Tetelestai. Wes up here helping me out earlier. He said, it is finished. Literally, okay, in the original language, the word was tetelestai. Here's what tetelestai means. We say it is finished, but what it really can also be translated at is paid in full. When Jesus said it is finished, he said, Tetelestai, this bill has been paid, and it has been paid completely. There's nothing that I have to add to it. There's not a certain number of Sundays that I have to be at church. There's not a certain number of prayers or times I got to be dunked into baptistry or, 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 or whatever man wants to attach to it. My sin debt was paid in full. Matter of fact, My certificate of debt was nailed to the cross. Well, might help if we didn't use petrified wood. But my sin debt was nailed to the cross. And when Jesus hung on the cross, his blood washed over my certificate of debt. And I love this. If you get this, it doesn't just say, uh, if it just said there in Colossians chapter 3 that the sin debt had been blotted out, amen, that'd be good, right? If it just, Jesus said, all right, I'm giving you a fresh start, Dusty. And salvation was just, I did away with all your sins that you've ever committed. Boy, that'd be good. But it wouldn't be enough. Because you know what? It wouldn't take long for me to start a new list of sins. It wouldn't take me long for that list to grow and be long. And it wouldn't be long until I had to say, Jesus, would you please just go back to the cross so that I could be saved again? So I'd get one more fresh start and then I'd blow it again. It doesn't say that. I love this. It says that he has blotted out the handwriting of the certificate of debt. He blotted it out. He did away with it. He canceled it out. That's good. But let me tell you how good my Jesus is. He didn't stop there. I love it. It says he put that way of life to public shame. Man, he made a mocker. He made a fool of my old life. My old life made a fool of me, and he made a fool of my old life. Amen? Some of y'all ain't sinned enough because you ain't very grateful for God's grace, apparently. Listen, I'm telling you, Man, I am ecstatic that I don't have to answer on the day of judgment for some of those things that I did. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 tells us that almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen? Without the shedding of blood, there was no hope. There was no, uh, there's just no hope for a guy like me. It was either going to be my life or it was going to be Jesus' life in my place. And praise God, he chose to pay a debt I couldn't pay. Because you see, what? Well, even my own life wouldn't have been enough because the sacrifice had to be spotless and blameless and perfect, and that ship sailed a long, long time ago. It took the blood of Jesus. And I thank God that I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Listen, we, you know, we're, we're gonna go a little old school this morning. Okay, sometimes we dance around the blood of Jesus and that hell is real and, and, and we have to be washed in the blood and, and we ain't all right and, and we can't live our best life now. And I'm telling you that I am only good because I recognized how bad I was and I asked Jesus to be my Savior. And I surrendered my life to Him so what does that mean for us? What does it mean today? The 
First thing it means is that we must be reconciled to God. And I have up there 1 Corinthians 5, 17 through 18a. It's actually 2 Corinthians. I apologize uh, for those of you following along in your Bible. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, let's, read, let's read here. Verses 17 and the first part of 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Amen? We must be reconciled to God. We have a nice, fancy church word for that. We must be saved. And I think sometimes we preach that and we proclaim that, especially you know, someone who's worked with children and youth. We use the word saved like everybody knows what that means. Just be saved. Well, what does that mean, preacher? Just be saved. What are you talking about? How do I know how to be saved if I, I came to church tonight not even knowing I was lost? Came to church this morning and I didn't know I had a need for Jesus. I'm telling you, we all have a need for Jesus. And to be saved is real simple. See, Jesus knew for somebody like me to be saved, he was going to have to make it simple. Now, I'll tell you, man makes it complicated. Jesus made it simple. He said salvation is when we place our trust and our hope, and our life in the hands of Jesus. Listen to me, church. We come to a place where we submit who we were, who we are, and who we are going to be to the hands of Jesus. It is not, has not been, and never will be, pray this prayer and you'll go to heaven. Now let's just be real for a second. Okay? Okay? Let's just get real down and personal and, and, and in a place of love, okay? It's coming from a place of love. Listen, if y'all can call Daniel later, say, don't ever let that joker up there again. That's all right, because I've already said what I want to say. <laughs> as Baptists, we get a bad rep sometimes as flaunting the phrase, once saved, always saved. Well, preacher, I got saved when I was seven, and I've lived like a hellion since, but I believe that preacher said, if you'll pray this prayer, you'll go to heaven, praise God. Sorry, friend. That's not it. You say, wait a minute, so you're saying we can live, whoa, 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 don't put words in my mouth. I, I say enough stuff to keep myself in trouble without you putting words in my mouth. I didn't say that. I said, I believe with all my heart that when we are saved, we are saved to the uttermost. We are saved completely and we can't add to it. We can't subtract from it. Ecclesiastes 3.14 says, whatever God does, he does forever. No man can add to it and no man can take away from it. And he does it so that men might fear before him. I did not say that we can lose our salvation because I do not believe that we can lose our salvation. What I said is that sometimes we talk people into praying a prayer that they didn't mean and committing to a life that they didn't really commit to. And then we say, all right, big guy, you're on your way. And that is unbiblical and dangerous doctrine. Well, my preacher, well, bless his heart too. Okay? I think they mean well. But here's the reality. You have to surrender yourself to Jesus Christ. You have to submit to his will and his desire and his plan for your life. Now that doesn't mean you won't sin. That doesn't mean you won't struggle. That don't, doesn't mean you won't backslide. I have done all of those things. But it means 
that his Holy Spirit is tugging on me and the flesh and the spirit that God has chosen to give me when I surrender to him are in constant conflict. And there are times that I have fed the flesh and the flesh has gotten almost out of control. And there have been times that I have fed the spirit and it has been the sweetest, most perfect fellowship with God that I've ever experienced. And it really comes down to which side am I feeding? Which side am I spending time with? We must be reconciled. We must come to the place where we decide, not because I go to church, not because my mom wants me to, not because grandpa said, not because uh, this boy or this girl that I'm interested in, they believe in Jesus, so I'm going to believe. It's coming to a point when I say, God, I am fed up with my life of sin. I see what you did, and I will follow you wherever that leads. Church, I'm going to challenge you that if you say today, I will follow you as long as, then you need to examine whether you have a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. Because a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ has no bounds. The cross had no bounds. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. I'm not going to sing. I'm going to spare you that. That's good doctrine. He paid it all. He deserves it all. We must be reconciled to God. It doesn't say we must go to church. We must give 10%. We must do this. We must do that. Now listen, those are good things. Don't don't, Don't get me wrong. But it says we must be reconciled. It says here, okay, uh, that, that the wages of sin is death. That there had to be the shedding of blood. And that because of what he did, we should follow him passionately. Because when we have a flippant attitude and we say, well, I'm saved. I'm saved. This little thing ain't going to hurt. I know it's not right. I know it's not good. But I'm saved. It's okay. Jesus already paid for it. Oh. Oh. The word of God's clear. For us who know Jesus and willfully sin anyway, there is no new payment of sin, but only a fearful looking to judgment. Now, does that mean we're going to be lost? No, but that does mean that we're going to be disciplined as children. So how do we be reconciled to God? We submit ourselves to Him. We surrender ourselves to Him. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Now that... that Believe in your heart is more than just a, oh yeah, I believe that happened. But it's a, I believe because that happened, he deserves my very best. He deserves my everything. He deserves my all. We give Jesus what's convenient too often. So this morning, there's somebody here There's little to no doubt, not claiming to be a prophet. There's little to no doubt, though. There's someone here who says, you know what? I need to be reconciled to God. I need to be saved. I prayed a prayer. I walked an aisle, but I never surrendered. Or maybe I didn't pray a prayer, and I haven't walked an aisle, but I know today I need to surrender. Praise God. Listen, we don't have to wait for an invitation. You can come on now, and I'll send you back there with... Some of my friends, they'll talk to you about how you can make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. That's the top priority today. Seeing what Jesus did should motivate us to give ourselves to him. I think sometimes we forget a good old Baptist, man, good old Christian church folks who just go to church and live good. We forget sometimes. We did that. We lose that 
passion. We lose that fire. We lose that feeling of the first time we realized that Jesus died for me. Man, that broke my heart. And I'll be honest with you, as 40 years old, there are times that my sin no longer breaks my heart because I've just grown accustomed to, yes, Jesus is good and he loves me and he forgives me. And it should break my heart more now because I know better. There are times I sinned and I didn't know better. Now I do and I still choose sin and it should tear me apart. But it doesn't sometimes. It doesn't sometimes. And that bothers me. Struggling one time with my, my own spiritual walk and I asked my pastor, I said, man, I heard a sermon and this guy said, if this is your testimony, you're not saved and that's my testimony. <laughs> I don't know. And Brother Tim told me this and it stuck with me forever. He said, here's the question. When you're doing the things that you're talking about right now, does God speak to you? Because if you can do it and do it and it doesn't bother you, then he, maybe he's right. I said, no, God whips my tail regularly. Tells me I'm wrong. He said, well, that's a good sign. Now get rid of this junk in your life. Amen? Listen, church. Let's get rid of the junk in our lives. Let's get rid of it. We must be reconciled to God. We're going to quickly, we're going to move on. But if you, man, if that's you and you say, I want to know more. Maybe you're not ready. But you say, I want to know more. I got questions. It's okay to ask questions. I think we've, we've got it wrong in our churches today where it's like, me talk to you and then we all go home. Listen, if you got questions, we got people who will answer them. Don't go home confused. Secondly, what must we do? We must be reconciled, but then we must proclaim reconciliation to others. See, there's no way, I'm just going to be, there's no way I can believe that Jesus did this for me. There's no way that I can believe that he's washed me in his blood and then not tell others. Either I don't believe that happened and that's real and that Jesus did that for me, or I will tell others. It's, it's not it can't be both. I can't believe that Jesus paid. If somebody came in and they bought your house and your car and they did all this stuff for you and they say, here, I'm just giving you all this. You're going to not tell anybody, especially then they say, listen, the people you tell and they come and say, hey, will you do that for me too? I'll do it for them too. Are you going to just sit there and not tell anybody? I doubt it. You better tell me. <laughs> right? If you love me, you'll tell me. Listen, if you love them, you'll tell them. I challenged my youth the entire time I was a youth pastor. This was my challenge to them, and it's my challenge to you this morning. Do not tell another soul that you love them if you're not willing to tell them about Jesus because you're lying to them. You're lying to them. There's no way you have a lost friend, family member, loved one that you love that's lost, that you won't tell about Jesus. And if you won't tell them about Jesus because you don't believe this, which goes back to problem number one, you've never been reconciled to God. And you say, Dusty, that's a little harsh. It's just, I'm not comfortable. Well, okay, I don't think Jesus was super comfortable going to the cross either. But I thank God that he didn't let his comfort stand in the way of doing what had to be done so that I could have salvation. I can't tell you I love you and not tell you about Jesus. That's a lie. Because if I loved you, I would want you to be reconciled to Jesus. I'm bad. Okay, let's go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18b, the last part of 18, going through verse 20. So here we go. Let's finish up this. Uh, so it just said he has reconciled us to himself by Jesus, and he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their, tras their trespasses unto them. And he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. 
We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So here we see that not only did he reconcile us, but he is giving us, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is not to Daniel and Josh and Brett alone or Jessica or Amanda, or Lisa, alone. It is to all of us. Those who have been reconciled to Jesus have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And what is this reconciliation? What are we even talking about? It means that we are separated from God. Right? Isaiah tells us that our sins have separated us from God so that uh, he will not hear our prayers. That's an uncomfortable truth. You're living in sin. God isn't obligated to hear your prayers except for the prayer of confession and repentance. Right? I didn't expect a lot of amens on that. It's okay. It's okay. We have been separated from God because of our sins. Listen, even as believers in Christ, our sins can interrupt our fellowship with Jesus. And we must again be reconciled. Not saved, but we must again be reconciled. We must take the sin out of the way by repenting and walking towards my sin. I repent, I turn and walk away from it. And I don't just walk away from it, but I walk to Jesus. Okay? But I've been saved, I've been reconciled to Jesus, and now I have been given the ministry of reconciliation. I am obligated. Listen, church. You, if you are saved, are obligated to try to reconcile others to Jesus, to proclaim the gospel. It is your obligation. Listen to what Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says. Boy, this gets you, this, it gets me fired up. I hope it gets you fired up. Here's what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah's going through a rough time, and he said that he, Jeremiah committed. He said, I am not telling anyone else about God. I am done telling people. These people just keep spitting in my face, and they're kicking dirt on me, and I'm done with them. He was wrong. Jeremiah 20, verse 9, at the end of it says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary from holding it in, and I could not stay. I couldn't help but tell others. I said I wasn't going to tell them, but you know what? I grew weary. Listen, church, let's be honest, okay? Let's be honest. In a lot of churches, the only one, no, okay, that, that, that was way over dramatic. Okay, in a lot of churches, 20% of the people in that church do 100% of the evangelizing in their community, in their church, and they're thinking, now you can say, well, I'll show up and I do this, and I give, and I do this, and I do that. Listen, it doesn't say that's our ministry. Our ministry is reconciliation. Nobody's going to be, listen, should we give food to those who need food? Absolutely. But just handing them a box of macaroni and sending them on their way, there are, there are secular groups that do that same thing, right? We should do it. That box of macaroni should come with the gospel. You know what I'm saying? All right, is, is this thing on? I mean, we are giving them, all those things are good. We should wash cars and we should have block parties and we should give away food and we should, we should provide child care. We should do all those things, absolutely. But if that's your version of reconciliation, that falls short of what God calls reconciliation. That makes us feel better. Lord, I served you this week. Mm -hmm. Listen, while we're doing it, let's give him Jesus. Right? While we're doing it, let's give him Jesus. They're coming here of their own Free will, man, that's awesome. We can get them to come here. I don't care what kind of bait you use. Sucker them dudes in here and let's tell them about Jesus. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I mean, I meant it, but it sounded worse than I thought. <laughs> let's get them here however we can. And let's tell them about Jesus. Right? Because it was our sin. Listen, this is the last thing. We're going to go with this. 
our first, first pri- primary ministry of reconciliation is in our own homes and in our own families. That's why we started with the most uncomfortable responsive reading in the history of responsive reading, right? Where Josh read and he made y'all say, let Jesus be crucified. Let Jesus be crucified. Let his blood be on us and our, listen, their mocking has become my prayer. Jesus, let your blood be on me. Let your blood be on my children. Jesus, I pray that everywhere I go, everything I say, everything I do, look, I don't do it. Listen, I don't know if y'all caught it or not, but Devin was me, okay? Devin was me. (laughs) I struggle sometimes with getting a little frustrated, throwing some things. His clipboard was broken. I don't know how that happened. Okay, I do. (laughs) I do. Okay, listen. I don't say that because I've got it down. I say it because I want to have it down. Jesus, let your blood show up in everything I do. I pray that it will be on everything I touch. I pray that when people see me, they see not a perfect guy, but a guy who loves Jesus. A guy who can say, you know what, I booted that one. I messed that one up. Forgive me. I pray that my life will be marked by the blood of Jesus. Pray that it'll be evident. Look, I forgot to bring a change of clothes. I'm going out to eat with my, my family and my mom later. That's okay. People, you think people are going to notice? I got something on me. I think they're going to notice it, right? But that's how it should be in our walk. That's how it should be in our life. As we go about our day-to-day business, people should notice, wow, that's different. Is that a new fashion statement? Yeah, I'm going to fashionably follow Jesus. I'm going to make that trend. I'm going to be cool, make following Jesus cool. I, I, I'm not going to make it cool because I can't, but I'm a, I want it to mark, man. I got his blood on my hands. I keep touching this nice new, new pulpit here, and it's got blood fingerprints on it already, first day. That's how our life should be. Everything we touch... The blood of Jesus should rub off of us a little bit onto it. Their mocking has become our prayer, church. Jesus, let your blood be on me and on my children and on my children's children. Let your blood be on me and on my parents and on my sisters and my cousins and my aunts and my uncles and my players and my students and my co-workers and, and, and the people under me at work and the, my bosses. Sometimes they need it most of all, right, Tressie? <laughs> I mean, let your blood be on everything that I encounter. And if I'm not leaving trails of Jesus' blood, then am I covered in it? Have I been bathed in it? Have I been washed in it? I want to challenge you, church. I don't think we have been. Man, I'm grateful that my certificate of debt was nailed to the cross. And I pray, Jesus, keep it when I'm tired, when I'm wore out, when I'm bogged down with life, let me not forget the sacrifice that you made so that I can have the hope of heaven. I heard some this week and, and I, I was like, wow. Never heard it put quite like that. And so I'm gonna mess it up, but I'm gonna share kind of what he said. And I don't even know who it was. Or, anyway, social media. Usually it's the devil. Every once in a while, it comes through clutch. But this guy said, he said, the problem with the American church is that our focus is on getting to heaven. But the biblical church, the church of the Bible, their focus was bringing heaven to earth. Some of us maybe prayed a prayer because we were hoping to get to heaven. God has called us to live a life that brings heaven to earth. Boy, that's good. Man, that's good. This week, what are we going to do to bring heaven to earth? 
for some of us, we just need to remember that Jesus did that. And I know how excited I was when he saved me, and I've lost that passion. I've lost that hunger. I've lost that excitement. Jesus, forgive me and help me be zealous for you again. And for some of us, we need to be saved for the first time. Some of us are saved and we're striving to do right, but we know we got folks that we're supposed to tell and we haven't done it. I don't know that there's a sadder sin in all of sins than to know we're supposed to tell someone we love about Jesus and not doing it. How are they going to hear? The scripture says, how will they hear unless somebody tells them? No chance of them making a commitment to follow Jesus if no one tells them they need to. If no one's real with them and says, hey, listen, I know you prayed a prayer. I'm not judging whether you're saved or not. That's between you and God. But here's what I am judging. I, I, there's no fruit right now. You're either lost or you're struggling. Either way, the Bible calls for the same prescription. Be reconciled to God. Repent, turn from your sins, surrender yourself to Jesus Christ, and then when you get all that in line, perform the ministry you've been given, which is the ministry of reconciliation. Let his blood be on us and on our children. We're going to have a time of invitation. I'm going to pray for you. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you need to be saved. Maybe you're saved, but you've struggled and you've realized, you've been reminded this morning that my sin is still gross and I need to do business with God. You can come talk to me or you can just do business with God at the altar. That's between you and Him. Maybe you just have questions or maybe you want somebody to pray with you for your kids, for your family, for your friends, for your coworkers. I'll be here and there will be others here as well. You do what God calls you to do. You do what God called you to do. That's between you and him, but I'm here to help you if I can in any way. Jesus, I love you. God, I thank you for the truth of your word. I just pray that I, that I was obedient this morning. I pray, God, that my life will be marked by the blood of Jesus in every area. Lord, I pray that ways that I have failed and struggled and stumbled and failed... God, that you will help me to do better and be better and do more. God, I pray that I won't rely on tradition or goodness or works. But God, I pray that I'll fall on your mercy and your grace every day. And I pray that you will absolutely remind me day by day that my sin had a price and you chose to pay that. And God, even though I can never pay it back, I pray that I will live every day to my dying breath, striving, striving to give back because you deserve everything that I can do and so much more. I pray that will be our heart's cry this morning. Let your will be done in this invitation. I pray if there's anyone here, God, who needs to do business with you, whatever that is, baptism, salvation, repentance, returning, whatever. I pray they'll do it and be obedient. In Jesus' name, amen. And Just as I am
to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcome with open arms. Praise God just as I am. Just as I want to be right with God. Listen, I think we all want to be right with God. I think that's probably why we're here. I just have questions. I need to talk it out. Sometimes just talking it out with somebody who cares about you is what you need, but we don't, we don't do that. It's so far, well, what if I, I go to Sunday school with them? They probably think I'm okay. You know, uh, I teach Sunday school. They probably think I'm okay. I, I work in the nursery. I'm on the safe team. I do whatever. Don't let any of that. Why would we let any of that? Hold us back. If you have questions, let's talk it out. And if you say, no, man, I know for a fact I'm saved. Praise God. That's good. It didn't hurt us to talk about it. And then if you say, you know what? I just, I'm ready today to make a true commitment. Then we'll nail that down too. All right? But just because you made it through the white knuckle gripping that pew, you made it through the invitation, it ain't over. I'm still going to bug you after church too. Let's, let's, let's take care of it. Don't go home lost. Don't go home confused. Let's talk it out. All right? Great commission. Then Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen.